Welcome to Wheels Up with Sunrise on Wheels. I'm Michelle Newman. Today's program has three segments. First, I'll take you on a trip and we'll see some funny looking animals. Birds, sloths, sea life, insects, reptiles, marsupials, and primates. Next, our friend Caroline will show us how to make a silly hanging sloth and a fun penguin. Then I hope you'll play along as we play Silly Animal Trivia. This week's theme is Be Silly, so I thought it would be fun to explore the world and look at some really silly and strange looking and behaving animals. Let's begin with birds. Have you ever seen this silly looking blue footed booby? <laughs> this gorgeous bird looks slightly surreal with its bright blue feet. The name is from the Spanish word el bobo, which means silly. The reason for this is these birds walk very funny on land. One half of all blue-footed boobies are found in the Galapagos. Fun fact, a group of boobies is known as a hatch, trap, or congress. Next, the shoebill, or the most terrifying bird in the world, is found in the swamps of eastern tropical Africa. They eat big fish like lungfish, eels, and catfish, and also crazy stuff like monitor lizards, snakes, and baby crocodiles. This bird eats crocodiles, and they hunt like total bosses of the swamp. The shoebill will stand there, motionless as a statue, and wait for some poor lungfish or baby crocodile to swim by. Then the bird will pounce forward, all five feet of it, with its massive bill wide open to engulf its target. Penguins are cute little things, that's for sure flightless birds that are often associated with the coldest of climates, although many penguin species do live in warmer areas of the world. The Adelaide penguin is a peculiar breed that can shoot its poop quite some distance away from its body. Gross, right? Well, it does serve purpose. Scientists believe these penguins develop such a poop-shooting behavior in order to keep their body relatively clean of fecal bacteria. Enough of gross pooping birds. Let's take a look at some odd ancient mammals. With their sad looking eyes, often smiling mouth, tiny ears, stubby tail, and ability to turn their head 360 degrees, sloths are among the most distinctive looking creatures in the animal kingdom. Famously lethargic, they can often be found in the treetops where they lounge, nap, and graze. Sloths are so good at blending into the environment that predators often zoom past without noticing their presence. The animals, which could be either two-toed or three-toed, are found in Central and South America. One of sloths' closest relatives are anteaters and armadillos. The pink fairy armadillo is quite cute, with a fuzzy white underbelly and a shell with a fashionably pink hue. This little armadillo is about the size of a hamster, giving it perfect pet-like appeal. You can find the pink fairy armadillo in central Argentina. Its range encompasses desert sand dunes and miles of scrub brush and grasslands. Let's look, next, let's look at some freaky-looking things under the sea. The parrotfish is an intriguing little sea critter. They use their beaks, which resemble that of a parrot, to scrape and bite away bits of coral on the sea floor. As a result of their coral chomping, their poop consists almost entirely of newly formed sand. That's right, the parrotfish poop sand. In fact, it's been discovered that some of the white sandy beaches of Hawaii were formed entirely from parrotfish poop. So the next time you're taking a walk on a white sandy beach, you might be walking on ancient piles of parrotfish excrement. A cousin of the famous piranha, the paku, also sports a serious set of teeth. Rather than razor sharp, these cuspids are square. In fact, their, dent their teeth look like a perfect set of human teeth. Creepy, right? But don't be alarmed, pacos are herbivores using their strong teeth to eat fruit and seeds. Several varieties of pacu are common in South America with heavy concentrations in the vast Piranha River system. Found on the Galapagos Island, the red-lipped batfish is actually a pretty bad swimmer and uses its pectoral fins to walk on the bottom of the ocean. A relative of the seahorse, the leafy sea dragon is a bit more exotic looking and can be found off the coast of Australia. 
At about eight to nine inches in length, leafies look like floating seaweed, providing them excellent camouflage in the deep sea. At the moment they hatch, these sea creatures are known for being completely independent. Oh, the mythical looking narwhal. This is the closest creature so far that has similar features of the beloved unicorn. These guys are almost as hard to find as an actual unicorn. They live in the Canadian Arctic, swimming throughout the Greenlandic and Russian waters and can live up to 50 years. This whale possesses a large tusk from a protruding canine tooth. Often called the cutest octopus in the world, the Dumbo octopus has fins on its mantle that look like the huge ears of Dumbo the elephant. Found in the deepest part of the ocean, they propel themselves through the water by flapping their strong fins, not by expelling water forcefully from their siphons, as other octopi do. Webbing between their arms aids them in swimming. There are also some odd-looking insects out there. Have you ever seen a moth as large as a hummingbird with prominent reddish wings? You can see the hummingbird hawk moth in Scotland, Wales, Ireland, and England, where it's often found feeding in gardens and woodlands. Speaking of moths, this one is covered with hair that makes it look like a poodle. Unlike a poodle, the Venezuelan poodle moth has wings and is attracted to your porch light, just like any other moth. The general consensus seems to be that this is the cutest moth ever. Don't you agree? Just as panda bears are notoriously cute, so too are panda ants. Fuzzy with a white body and black spots, they look adorable and innocent. But don't underestimate them, as they might actually be more dangerous than the bears. The females are actually wingless wasps that sting. So if you see a cute little ant that looks like a panda in Chile or Argentina, whatever you do, don't pick it up. Peacock spiders cram a whole lot of swagger into a teeny tiny package. The biggest can reach about 0.3 inches, about the size of a pencil eraser. Like almost all spiders, peacock spiders are venomous, but that doesn't mean they're dangerous to humans. Their little jaws are so tiny, they couldn't even puncture our skin. We're safe, but crickets and other spiders are not. Like all jumping spiders, the peacock spiders don't build webs. They stalk their prey, kind of like lions. When the time comes, they pounce and can take down prey three or four times their size. To attract females, the male peacock spiders have evolved spectacular fans on their butts and fancy dances to show them off. Funny, right? Want to track down an odd-looking five-fingered lizard that looks like a worm? Head to Mexico's beautiful Baja Peninsula to find the Mexican mole lizard. If you look closely, you'll notice its elongated, ribbed body is attached to short legs with five fingers. Its head also has eyes and a mouth, but you must look closely before the features become apparent. What about some odd-looking spiders? Tarantulas give some people the creeps because of their large hairy bodies and legs. But these spiders are harmless to humans, except for a painful bite. And their mild venom is weaker than a typical bee's. Because tarantulas molt throughout their lives, replacing their exoskeletons as they grow, they have the ability to repair any damage they've sustained. Should a tarantula lose a leg, a new one will reappear as if by magic the next time it molts. Depending on the tarantula's age and the length of time before its next molt, the regenerated leg may not be quite as long as the one it lost. Tarantulas will sometimes eat their detached legs as a way to recycle the protein. Yuck! Happy face spiders, the strange pattern in the spider's yellow abdomen takes the form of a smiling face. What do you think? Isn't that silly? Funny-looking primates, not all monkeys are adorable. This is Quintana. While a monkey, he looks rather evil. Proboscis monkeys have huge noses and are impressive swimmers, a rare skill for a primate found in the jungles of Borneo. Mandrills are the brightest and biggest of all monkeys and one of the most colorful. They are omnivores and eat anything from fruit to small reptiles. They're found in the deep rainforests along the equator in Africa. Slender lorries have very funny 
faces with huge eyes and a surprised look. That expression gives them the name lorries, which means clown. They don't have a tail, and they use their hands and legs to move from one tree to another. The red-shanked Duke Langer looks almost like an alien. With their deep black eyes, white mouths, and orange faces, they look like a science fiction character. There aren't many left, but those that are can be located in Southeast Asia. Most monkeys with bright blue faces are found in snowy mountain ranges in China and can survive extremely low temperatures. Weird looking, am I right? What poops cubes has ever growing teeth and can almost run as fast as Flash? The wombat. You could find these in Australia. A fuzzy little marsupial with a friendly face and a calm demeanor. But don't be fooled. Wombats sport rodent-like teeth and can get aggressive if they feel threatened. Their teeth never stop growing, kind of like a guinea pig. And they poop a lot. It's shaped like a cube, producing over 100 cubic pellets per day. To protect the tunnels where they live, they dive into them headfirst and stick up their butts, which is tough enough to thwart predators. The Tasmanian devil is the largest carnivorous marsupial in the world. Though devils may resemble a small dog, these nocturnal animals carry their young in pouches and are more closely related to wallabies than dogs. Let's look at some awesome amphibians. A glass frog is also known as a see-through frog because of its translucent skin. Translucent means you can see right through something. And you can see a glass frog's heart and organs through their skin. Many of these frogs have lime green skin, but some lack any coloring on their underside, making their organs visible to the naked eye. Equally amazing are their spotted backs, which scientists speculate are meant to resemble eggs, so predators going after their offspring get confused. Your best chance of spotting this tree-dwelling frog is in a rainforest in Costa Rica or Panama. The blue poison dart frog is the color of sapphire and, oh, so beautiful but deadly. It secretes a toxic substance through its skin. Each one has a distinct pattern of black spots, a sort of fingerprint that can be used to tell them apart. Small and with big round eyes, the golden poison frog looks harmless, but it is so toxic, it's enough to kill a human. Although commonly yellow, adults may be different colors. Remarkably, the snake is immune to the poison, making it the frog's only predator, and it's found in the Amazon rainforest. Red plum tomato frog is very much like a big ripe tomato, typically found in the rainforest of Madagascar. The Goliath frog measures between 6 to 12 inches and weighs as much as 7 pounds, making it the largest frog in the world. It is endangered and lives in the rivers of Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon. The Indian purple frog looks nothing like everyday frogs. Besides their unique and striking purple color, they're shaped like a lump and possess features that seem deformed when compared to a regular frog. Their irregular shape is partly attributed to their lifestyle. They spend the majority of their lives tucked underground, sucking down termites and other burrowing insects, only surfacing for a week or two during mating periods. The frogs like a forested habitat, and they are tricky to spot. Well, it's time for our journey to see these weird and odd and silly-looking animals to come to an end. I hope you enjoyed. Which one was your favorite? Hi, my name is Caroline and I'm so excited to do another craft with you today. Today's theme was all about being silly and a lot of silly animals were in the video, so I picked two of my favorites. My first one was this sloth, so I decided to make a sloth craft. And my second one was a penguin, so I decided to make a penguin craft too. I hope you have fun doing these crafts with me. First, we're gonna make the sloth craft. So what you will need is some green paper for the leaves and a darker green marker for, to draw the details on the leaves. I'm making a brown sloth, so I'm using lighter brown paper for the branch and some darker for the sloth so you can see it a little bit better. And then you also need some white paper for the face, a black marker, scissors, and glue. So first we're gonna make the sloth's body. So what you need is your color paper that you're gonna use for its body. And if you wanna make it 
more silly, you can use a different color, but I'm just using brown. And I'm using a marker to draw it so you can see it a little bit better, but you could use a pencil so if you make a mistake, you can erase it. So first, you're gonna draw a big crescent shape across the paper, like that. And then draw a, a little bit smaller crescent inside of that. Like that. And now we're gonna cut this out. So I'm almost done cutting it out. Okay, so this is the sloth's body. And now we're gonna make the branch. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut a long strip down your paper for its branch. And I'm using the lighter browns so that it stands out a little bit more. So now the branch is cut out and make sure that the branch is a little bit longer than the sloth. So now we're gonna hang our sloth upside down because that's how they go in the trees. And we're gonna glue this on to the branch. So now I glued on the sloth's body onto the branch. So now we're gonna make the sloth's face. So I'm using my scrap pieces of paper and I'm using the same color that I used for the body. And we're just gonna cut out a big circle for its head. So now I cut out my sloth's head and now we're gonna glue it onto the body. So make sure that you glue it on onto here so that it looks like it's hanging upside down. So make, so put a little bit of glue on and now it should look like that. Now we're gonna cut out a smaller circle of white paper to go inside of the head. So make sure that the circle is a little bit smaller so that it can fit inside our head. Like that. And now we're gonna glue it inside. So it should look like that. Now we're gonna make the sloth's eyes. So I'm using my extra brown, light brown paper. So the same color that I used for the branch. And we're gonna cut out a shape that is rounded at the top and straight at the bottom. So it should look like that. And make sure to cut out two of those. So here are the shapes that I cut out. And now we're gonna glue them onto our face. So I made my eyes a little bit smaller because they were a little bit too big for the head. So you can always trim down yours. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our eyes inside of the brown pieces of paper like that and now we're going to draw the nose and the mouth so for the nose we're going to draw a shape almost like a circle but a little bit flatter at the end and then color it in like that and then the smile So it should look like that. Now we're gonna make our sloth some leaves because he's living in the trees. So I'm just gonna cut out some leaf shapes and if you need to, you can draw them out before you cut them. And they should be pointed at the bottom and the top. Like that. And I'm just gonna make a few more of them. So in total, I made four leaves. Now I'm gonna use my green marker that's a little bit darker than the paper and I'm just gonna draw some details. So first, I'm gonna draw a big line down the middle, like that, and then some little lines coming out of it. Like that. Now I'm gonna do this to the rest of them and then glue them onto the branch. So now I'm gonna glue on my leaves. And also, when you were doing your leaves, when you were cutting them out, they can be all different shapes and sizes because that's how leaves are. So I'm gonna glue them on the branch and one of them, a few of them I'm gonna glue behind the branch so that it looks like they're coming out of the branch. So you're gonna wanna put the glue on the opposite side, so not where the sloth is, sloth's head is, other side, like that. And also you can make them so that it looks like they're bunched together or you can make them spread apart, however you want to do it. 
So I'm going to make mine so that they look a little bit bunched together. So that's how it looks. And finally, I'm going to make my, I'm going to put some toes on my sloth. So I'm just going to take my black marker and put some lines because they have little claws or toes. And that's how it looks. So now we're going to make the penguin craft. So for this craft, you need a paper cup, orange paper, white paper, and black paper, glue, scissors, and googly eyes. And if you don't have googly eyes, you can draw on your eyes or cut out paper and then put it on. So the first step is since I have a white cup, I want to make my penguin black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure my, my paper so that my paper fits all the way around my cup. So first, you're just going to put your paper on the cup and you're going to mark off where it goes until, so how tall it is. And just mark that off. And then I'm gonna hold the ends of your paper and roll it around it. And then you're gonna mark off where it stops. And then we're gonna cut that piece of paper out. So now I glued my paper onto my cup. So the next step is we're gonna make our penguin's belly. So I'm using some white paper and I'm just gonna cut out an oval shape. And make sure that's a little bit smaller than the cup so that it fits inside of it. So this is my penguin's belly. Now I'm gonna glue it onto the black part of the cup so that it takes up most of it. like that. Now I'm going to glue on the eyes and, and the nose. So now I glued on both of my eyes and now I'm going to do my nose. So for the nose, I'm going to cut out a big triangle out of my orange paper. Make sure that's pointed. And I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller. And now I'm gonna glue it on underneath the eyes. Like that. So now I'm gonna cut out my penguin's feet. I'm using a marker to draw out the feet before I cut it out, just so that you can see it a little better. But you can use a pencil so that if you make a mistake, you can erase it. So first I'm gonna draw a diagonal line up. And then we're gonna go back down like this and then down again like that and then back down diagonally like that now we're going to cut out this shape and i'm going to fold it in half so that i get two at the same time so now i'm going to glue on my feet so i'm just going to glue them on and then make sure they're like folded back and put one on each side. So as you can see, I glued this part on the inside of the cup and now I'm gonna do it to the other side too. So now the feet are on. Now we're gonna do the wings. So I'm using my black paper and we're gonna cut out a wing shape. So it should be pointed at the end and then round on the top like that. So now we're gonna fold our wings just like we did with the feet. So we're gonna fold the, the, the rounded part and then we're gonna put some glue on and then stick it onto the body so that it sticks out a little bit more. Same thing with the other one. So if anything falls off, like sometimes my feet fall off, you can just glue them back on and put a little bit more glue on. 
So this is our penguin craft done. I hope you had fun doing these crafts with me. Bye. Welcome to Silly Animal Trivia. If you want to play along, go to crowd.live backsplash K D A Q C. Let's begin. Question number one. What are the blue footed birds found in the Galapagos called? A shoe bill, B a go away, C a booby, or D a blueberry? What are those blue footed birds called? And the answer is a booby. Question number two. What shape is wombat poop? Is it A, a cube, B, a cylinder, C, a circle, or D, a sphere? What shape is that wombat's poop? And the answer is a cube. Shooting poop was interesting. Shooting poop. <laughs> Question number three. Which monkey has a funny looking nose? Is it a parrot monkey, a toucan monkey, a proboscis monkey, or a chimpanzee? I think only two of those are really monkeys. And the answer is proboscis. Funny looking, huh? Question number four. What frog can you see through? A mirror frog, a green frog, a glass frog, or an Indian purple frog? And the answer is a glass frog. It's a cool looking frog. It yeah, is. that was insane. It, it like the body's looks exhibit. like it's glass. It I does. Know, it I know like it. Really so Five. Cool. A Venezuelan poodle moth is known for its what? A bark. B, it swims. C, it looks like a poodle. Or D, it chases cats. I bet you could figure this one out. And the answer is, it looks like a poodle. Question number six. Which animal has sad looking eyes, is often smiling mouth, tiny ears, and a stubby tail? A, the wombat, B, the paku, C, a sloth, or D, an armadillo? Hmm, which one could it be? And the answer is, a sloth. A yeah, sloth. people think they're really cute, but I, I <laughs> find them very sloth formidable. Number seven. Which animal resembles a unicorn? A, a narwhal, B, a parrotfish, C, a snow dragon, or D, a hummingbird? I had never even seen one of these before I started doing this movie. And the answer is A, narwhal. Question number eight. What animal sometimes eats its own leg? A Mexican mole lizard, a tarantula, a mandrill, or a shoebill? Hmm. What might eat its own leg? Answers, please. Three, two, one. And the answer is tarantula. Question number nine. What kind of animal is a Tasmanian devil? Is it A, a dog, B, a marsupial, C, a primate, or D, a reptile? What kind of animal is a Tasmanian devil? Answers, please. And the answer is a marsupial. And our last and final question, question number 10. Which animal has huge eyes and a surprised look on their face. A, a wombat, B, a slender lorries, C, a panda ant, or D, a glass frog. This one might be kind of tough, but it has huge eyes and a surprised look. And the answer is slender lorries. <laughs> and the winner Woo! is Sherry. Sherry. Good job. I hope you enjoyed and played along. If you would like to play, you could go on crowd.live and just enter code K-D-A-Q-C. I hope you had fun. See you next time.